dorky, silly cameo, but like this is the new generation for sure. Um, oh yeah, for sure. Hey guys, this is RBR Short from 13, AK Ryan. And we just, me and Cass just got out of the theater to go see Scream 6. Um, we just saw Scream 5 last year and um, now we just watched Scream 6. I loved it. Um, I probably would put it as my third favorite after the first two movies. I definitely think it's up there with the first two films. I, 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 and I didn't really say that much about the sequels that came after, but this one, I, I definitely felt it was different. Um, and I, I, I just was very impressed, very surprised. We all got it. Me and Cass got a poster. Oh, yeah, we did. Scream 6 poster from the, the theater. It's got a Manhattan look to it and yep. stuff. So that's really cool. Oh, yeah. You want to show your poster? Mine's in the back. It's the same one. <laughs> we got the same poster. Yeah, yeah. It's dope. So, yeah, we saw it. I loved it. Um, do you have a favorite part, Cass? I don't know. I like the part where she was crawling on the, um... The ladder part. The ladder. That was the that... most... Yeah. Close your door. Yeah, that part, that was crazy. That was probably the coolest ghost face scene I've ever seen. Because yeah. there's nothing been anything comparable to that. That was at the edge of your so seat. I feel like, like that was like its own thing that's never happened in the Ghostface series. So I loved it. It was cool. That was great. How are you, doggy? 40X. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, 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 I can't believe it, but I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy with this movie. Um, I don't know what I, I know I have two Scream 6 posters. I mean, it's. It definitely was. Uh, me and Cass's generation like it was it's definitely our generation and and but it also had callbacks to the original it had callbacks to yeah even our generation because we were like more millennials like the 2011 era with right. Herbie yep. you know Hayden Panettiere yeah, like they grew they, up with Herbie's generation yeah they talked about uh Jill and Charlie and like me and Cass saw Scream 4 like right when it came out back in 2011 yeah it was, was definitely 15. very nostalgic for sure yeah so it not only brought back you know the OG cast, and it brought back the, the new cast, but it also brought back Kirby, which everybody was wondering where she was right. for, you know, all these years, years. and the whole decade. yeah, we had a TV show, we had the, the Scream Five, and but it's like, well, where's Kirby? Kirby. <laughs> and she was given a lot of character development in this. I was really happy about that. Yeah, and I like that it showed like it made sense to why she came back. Yeah, like, we won't give yeah. too much away as a spoiler, but like, yeah, <laughs> it made sense why her character came back once you watch it. Because I was like, how the f did you bring Kirby back? Right. And now it makes sense. Yeah. So y'all gotta watch it. I mean, I liked it. It might not be for everybody. Like, some people might hate it. Some people might love it. I don't know. It's probably gonna get mixed reviews, but I liked it because it was nostalgic and then also like badass. So. Yeah. But, you know, to, to each their own. Everyone has their own opinion on everything, so who knows what the <laughs> feedback's going to be on this. But you enjoyed it? Oh, f yeah. And, well, in our defense, we did see it in 4D. So we like, saw it in 4D acts, which got, was the like, ultimate experience. You got 3D. stabbed, you felt that shit, you know? Like, <laughs> when, like, a jump scare happened, you felt that shit. Like, I don't know, in the regular 2D world. No, you're not going to get that. <laughs> right, like, we're going to go watch it in 2D, and, like, I might think it's lame but because we watched it in 4d for the first time i thought it was dope yeah yeah but you know we're gonna go watch it in 2d and then give an honest critique and review of that but mm -hmm. from what i saw i loved it i thought it was great me too i thought they crushed it me too cool yeah cool so yep uh finally after a year which is sh is shocking because um scream four to scream five that was 11 year wait <laughs> the fact we're that being this, spoiled we're like oh, yeah we're being spoiled <laughs> that this not only came out just a year after five but it's in 3d and 4dx well, like it's still not enough it's, still it's not, not enough, enough no <laughs> when they need, I need it more. yeah well we need the show back with the old G with the old cast from the old show. They need to wrap up season three. You know the the original timeline. They're like, can't be done. We're like can't we be want done because you know, they, they got to give Kirby her own show. They got they got to do everything now. Guarantee Kirby's getting her own show. Yes, yes. Like oh my god, this the, this movie set up like so many you know different, different versions of, of of where you can go with the plot, yeah. the characters, and. We'll see what happens. I don't know. But 
maybe Sydney will come back. I don't know. But I have no idea. They didn't give any English. They, they didn't get yeah, yeah. I I'm, I don't know. Like some sixth sense of of me is sensing that Sydney will be yeah. back in Scream Seven. Oh, for sure. But it was a great movie. I, I I loved it. It was a roller coaster ride. It wasn't as fast paced as I was expecting, which is a good thing. Um, the movie did have moments of of pause and um, had just really great character development and really developed the characters from the last movie a lot more than, than this movie. They developed them yeah. a lot more. And um, Jenna Ortega was incredible. Um, uh, Melissa Barbera was incredible. Courtney Cox is great as always. Hayden Pantier was amazing. Uh, the actor who plays Sean in Shameless. Fantastic. Fantastic. What a great cast, great, uh, great characters. I highly recommend it if you're a Scream fan. To check it out. Yeah, at least watch it and then create an opinion of your own. But like, I don't think it was yeah. a bad watch or like a fantastic watch. I feel like it was exactly what I anticipated. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not the original movie. It's not Scream Two. It'll never be, you know, those those great '90s Scream films. But I do think it is better than Scream. It's Scream4. worth the watch. I think it's better than Scream Three, Scream Four, and Scream Five. Yeah. But that's that's me, and uh, I, I loved it. So. I agree. I can't wait to see it again. I can't wait to watch it again and again. I can't um, wait to watch it in 2D. In, in 2D. See what the difference is. Yeah, yeah. To watch it in a, in a different uh, format. That, that's not, um, you know, you're, 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 the seat's shaking consistently and you're... Yeah, that shape was like too much. Was popcorn. Like, popcorn falling off her chair. I was getting yanked and left and right. I was like, dang it, I'm little. It's late. I just worked all day. I don't need to be whipped around. Oh. Please take me out to dinner first. Like, <laughs> you can feel the sure. blood, everything on her Dude, ears. I like, was like <laughs> just got off work. I just wanted a nice night, and then I got yanked in the next Tuesday. Oh, Cass lives in Philly. She don't need to feel it. <laughs> like, I, I get this experience every day. I literally sat in that chair. And was like, whoosh. I was like, okay, so this is how the night's going. Great. Okay. So that's how, okay, loaded, got it, okay. So I'm just gonna get murdered while watching the movie of murders. Right, got it, noted, okay. So yeah, like, preferably don't watch it in 4D your first time unless you want a whiplash, okay? But other than that, it was fun, it was great. Great. It was great, no, it was really fun, but I do want to watch it in 2D, just like regular, just see what the f it's like normal because that yeah. was a lot. Yes. I was like, you film this shit too, dog? No? Like, Holy <laughs> shit, bro, my neck almost snapped. I was like, yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Yep, that's just how the movie goes. Yes. <laughs> That, it's crazy. That, the whole subway sequence, you could feel that. Yeah, that was like know? the most intense part. No, but honestly, since the first act, like, it captured the, like, how scared you are in that scenario captures it in 4D. So, like, if you want the real, yeah. like, I want to feel scared experience, watch it in 4D. But if you just want to, like, see if you like the movie and yeah. don't want to waste the money, watch it in 2D. And then if you love it, watch it in 4D after that. Yep. Ryan and I just said ball, and we just went ball to the wall. We we're like, yeah, let's go all the way out. But nope. now, if you want to test the waters, watch it in 2D. I haven't seen it in 2D, so I can't even vouch if it's good or not. But like 4D, obviously, it's like Universal Studios in your <laughs> it's neighborhood, like a, a theme park attraction. Bro, I'm in the suburbs of King of Prussia, but like Universal said, "Welcome to the Scream Ride." We're gonna bring you right there. Um, yes, that was thirty the first, bucks a ticket. So we'll first see. Scream movie to ever experience that, dude. Like, it was insane. Oh my god! They nailed like every time he stabbed, your seat would move. Yes, yeah, so you'd feel the blood. You'd, you'd feel, feel the, the blood air, the on you, the everything. Air, New York, the smell of New York. They had. They the said, smell. if we could bottle New York in a bottle, would it smell like swamp? They said, mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> yep, put the swamp smell as your 4D experience. I'm like, great. <laughs> I was just there last weekend. I already gagged enough. Thank you. I mean, you nailed it. But do I want to smell swamp in the comfort of my own home? Absolutely not. But will I watch it? Sure. So if you're wanting to smell swamp as the real life experience, you're welcome. Watch it in 40. <laughs> but, yeah, it was okay. It was great. I love it. <laughs>
smell of it. It's awesome. <laughs> Dude, tell me, did you smell it? Yeah. Every time the mist of the air would go in, I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad. Welcome to New York. <laughs> hey, they're like, go Yankees, am I right here? <laughs> it was so bad. So bad. Anyways, make an opinion of your own. Um, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe now. Subscribe. If you want to follow me, follow me at some RBR short films. That kind of thing. <laughs> but um, no, go watch it. Go watch it and then leave a comment on your reviews. And then I'm going to read them personally and tag you if I disagree with your comment. So I'm just kidding. Yeah, so go have fun. Go have fun. Watch it. Let us know what you think. All right. Yeah. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I'll, I'll definitely do a uh, updated review of Scream 6 in the future, but thank you guys for watching, and uh, woo, Scream 6! Woo! Hello, everybody. This is RBR Short Films 13, aka Ryan, and today I'm doing a video, a review of Scream 6. Um, I just saw it. Um, you can see I got a poster from the theater. Um, they were giving out free posters, uh, I guess because it was a Thursday night event. Um, but not only did I get that poster, the, the one up front, in the mail not too long ago, but then I got that from the movie theater. So it's two Scream 6 posters, which is so cool. And then I got my Scream 4 one over there. <laughs> I have a bunch of Scream 6 posters now and a Scream 4 poster, but not a Scream 5. <laughs> Or, or the original or Scream 2, but um, I'm sure I'll get more Scream posters in the future and merchandise and all that, but anyway, um, I want to do a quick review of the movie, uh, spoiler, um, I guess, or I don't know, should I make this spoiler for spoiler free? I think I'll do a spoiler review. Um, uh, yeah, why not? <laughs> um, so, um, I loved this movie. Uh, I loved it. And it's definitely my favorite Scream film after the first two movies, uh, which is a big deal because Scream 3, 4, and 5 um, just weren't, they weren't the first two movies. Like, I, I, I still love Scream 4. I still really like Scream 5. Um, and a lot of people know how I feel about Scream 3, but... Um, Watching that uh, all over again the other night with a marathon of all five films um, made me look at it a little differently. Um, and I like that Scream 6 acknowledged Scream 3 as well, uh, things that happened in Scream 6, which is really cool. But now I'm going to go into Scream 6. Uh, yeah, it's a big deal for the sixth installment of a franchise, you know, to be that fresh and... Um, it was definitely a uh, new generation uh, Scream. Um, Scream 5 was very much passing the torch. Dewey was kind of like helping out the new generation of characters um, in 5. Scream 4 was about passing the torch as well. Um, and Scream 6 was the first Scream movie out of the Scream quadrilogy. Now now that we, we, we see that, I mean... If they do make a Scream 7, I, I think they will. Um, I'd be shocked if they didn't. But if they, uh, if anything, this is the end of the Scream sequel trilogy or it's one more entry before the last entry of the Scream quadrilogy. So it's 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 going to go either way. But um, uh, this movie definitely felt uh, like it wrapped up a lot. Um, but it also uh, left it open for all bunch of new movies, new films, new stories to tell. Um, and, uh, so we're going to start with, I guess, like a, a major spoiler, uh, Gail died. Um, that was really tough, uh, to sit through. Um, that whole sequence, I was like, Oh God, when's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? I just knew it was going to happen. And, I was hoping that it wasn't going to, and then like Sam, you heard you heard Sam, you know, come in and every and everybody, and you see Tara, and you're like, oh, maybe there's hope, but no, Gail goes, but she, the last thing she says is, tell Sydney he didn't get me, and that was really, really powerful moment, um, 
And uh, it was just shocking that, oh my God, that's it for Gail? Like, that that's it? Like, because after like six movies and you go through, sit through six movies with that character, it's just, you, it, it's just shocking to believe that that's it. Um, like Dewey died the last movie and uh, Randy died in Scream 2, Cotton, Weary was killed in Scream 3. So we, we've had a lot of major characters go throughout the films. But um, in terms of like the the main two, Sydney and Gail, the Gail's go, gone. Like that's that, that's that's nuts. That's a big deal. So um, only person that's left of the OG uh, is Sydney. Really, I mean, they could bring back probably certain characters. I mean, you still have um, Randy's sister, and you still have like Chad and Mindy in the storyline. So they they could you know there's obviously characters that were from the previous films, but in terms of like the main three or. They just, you know, yeah, the main four, you, Sydney, Gail, Dewey, and and Randy, you know, like all uh, three out of the four are gone now. So um, it's a new generation. And I did love that about this movie is that it was not focused on passing the torch. It was just about telling the story about these new generation of characters that were established in four and five. Kirby was established in four. We know her character. Um, we got to learn that she's like a movie buff and she's really smart and, um, and, and really cool. And, uh, we know that what happened to her at the end of four. And I love that Scream 6 goes into everything that happened to Kirby and how it's affected her and that she's like working for the FBI. Um, I like that they do that, you know, this whole twist at the end that you think for a second that Kirby is, is Ghostface. Because that was one of my main predictions. I said, if, if Stu isn't Ghostface in this movie, then it's Kirby. Um, now, the movie did... It, there's probably a moment that's going to make some fans mad um, when Stu is confirmed to be dead. Uh, when you have that scene finally where Kirby and Mindy are t having horror trivia together, which was so cool. Because they're the movie buffs, you know, from all from the previous movies. So for them to, to talk about horror films, that was that was one of my favorite parts of the movie. That was really cool, and and they're looking at the TV, you know, that that, that supposedly killed Stu, but they still hinted, I think, that you know, um, he could still be alive. It's like, oh, if you believe uh, that, that he's dead, um, so that was cool. That was cool. Um, I saw it in 4DX, so it was a different experience than just seeing it in. 2D because I saw Scream 5 um, in 2D and I saw Scream 4 in 2D which Scream 4 came out at a time when 3D was a big deal it was it became a big thing because Avatar um, in 2010 everything that came out in two, 2011 2012 2013 was 3D so the fact that Scream 4 wasn't 3D was a big deal actually um, so this was the first experience of any Scream film in 3D it was it was oh, I, I like that uh, I mean, this was the Jason Takes Manhattan, you know, of the franchise. This was Ghostface, you know, Takes Manhattan, you know, in 3D. I mean, I think that was really cool. So you do have, like, those classic, you know, uh, 80s slasher gimmick moments like that. But the movie was still trying to tell a story. It was still trying to have great character development. It was still trying to make you care about these characters, these new characters. Because I, uh, I love Mindy. I really like Chad. Um, I do think him surviving this movie was a little over the top. I mean, not only did he live the last movie, which I was okay with. I was like, oh, yay. So he's he's going to have more character development in the next movie. They can do something where they can do more with this character. Uh, but you, for the first, you see two ghost faces stab him in the movie. And I'm like, okay, that's it. That's it. I mean, two ghost faces just chip, 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 chip. And he, and, he, and he survived that. Like, okay, with Dewey, it, you know, I was already mad that he uh, survived the second movie. Uh, at the end, that, that what happened at the in the second movie. I'm like, come on, he, he, he survived the first movie, and then you tell me he's going to live the second one. So I don't like when they do that with characters where they bring them back again and again. Like, oh, they, they died, and now they're still alive. I, I, I don't like that in, in horror films. Um, I like... Uh, um, that closure feeling, um, 
and um, a lot of characters went and a lot of characters didn't. So Tara, Sam, Chad, Mindy, they're all still around. Kirby, um, but then Gail, um, um, a lot of the new characters, basically all the Ghostface killers were um, all, they're all gone out of the, the plot. Um, so a lot of characters didn't go. Um, uh, I was surprised, though, that that that, that uh, Sam or Tara didn't go. I, I thought Sam or Tara were definitely going to die, um, cause it, or, or, or like Kirby, like they were so much hinting that that, that that was it for Kirby at the end of the movie as well. I was like, oh, wow. But I'm glad that wasn't it for Kirby. I, I really it was this movie was all is a lot to take in. But uh and it's definitely going to be, I'm going to have to see it a second viewing. Um, but it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, I, I, I loved it. It was all, it's just that New York setting. I love the opening sequence. I like, um, I love how the opening is done. And I like that. What shocked me was they showed who the killer was. So this was a completely different film uh, than all the previous movies in that sense. Because it, that was the most like I'm something different because I thought for a second, okay, this ghost face is revealed in the beginning. What's going to happen? And then he gets killed off, which actually was pretty cool. Like a ghost face gets killed by a ghost face. I mean, that was, that was a very unique opening. I thought that was a lot, very original opening sequence and, and very suspenseful and very much like the original movies. Um, I don't think the opening, was the first two movies by any means neither of the opening of scream 4 i i know a lot of people have mixed responses about the scream 4 opening i love scream 4's opening i love the stab 6 stab 7 um and then cuts into the actual film i thought that was brilliantly that was brilliant scream 5 you have that classic jenna ortega opening you know ghostface coming after her which was which was great and she gets attacked it's the first opening sequence where um uh, the victim survivor doesn't, the victim doesn't get killed, actually survives. So that was cool. Um, I do say, I will, will say this was a better opening sequence than Scream 3. This definitely, for sure, um, had a lot more to it. But um, you could say it's one of the weaker openings of the, of the series. Um, it just, it wasn't a standout opening sequence where I'm like, oh yeah, that was the best part of the movie. And usually you know, the biggest part of the movie you remember is the opening of a screen film. And, uh, that wasn't the case with, with, with this movie. Um, but I still really did like it. I still really did like it and it set up the plot. Now I was a little disappointed with Sam, uh, psychologist. I thought Sam was seeing Nancy from Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, I thought we were going to get a little, uh, Heather Lannenkamp cameo or something cool like that. Um, and then I thought, oh, okay, something cooler. It was the old guy from Ready or Not, the villain, the dad. And I'm like, ooh, what if he's one of the ghost faces? And I'm like, it would perfectly make sense that some, you know, an act, he, his acting, like he could pull off a character that's been living in New York and has this shrine, you know, and, and he's the one, the mastermind behind it all. You know, I mean, it got revealed that the, all the killers are, are, are Richie's, uh, relatives and dad. Um, um, I mean, they might as well just included the grandfather too. I mean, <laughs> uh, cause he ended up just being a random character that was killed. Um, I do think that they're holding back with Sam's character. Uh, uh, cause you never know. Cause she hallucinates Billy. She hallucinates her dad and she, uh, hallucinates him not just like in a way where she's just like it's like a picture she's seen of him or something and it's just you know ski ulrich no it's like him from the end of the first movie so i do think there is something um i do think that sam is it's possible that sam could be one of the next ghost faces uh and that it, it'll get revealed that um like the kill with, with um uh was it that guy outside the bar in scream five that'll get revealed that Sam was the killer in that scene. And then the old, uh, and then the psychologist, they get, when he got killed, that was Sam. And, and it'll go back to that. Those two kills were, were Sam and not these new ghost faces. And the new ghost faces didn't even know 
you know, why. Um, I think that would be kind of cool. It would make it a little more like, whoa, especially if it's Billy's daughter. But I also do like the concept of her character, you know, not wanting to be what her dad was and, 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 and push away from that and, and be a, a you know better person and, and everything. And I, and I, I like that. I like the, the film went into the relationship between Sam and Tara because we didn't get like, we got a little bit of that in Scream 5, but not like a bunch. Like they just like reconnected after five years in that movie, and 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 we don't know much about their characters when we when you see Scream 5. But now when you see Scream 5 and then you get to Scream 6, you're like, okay, well, what's more? And and I wanted to know more about the mom and Gail and uh, Sam were talking about the mom, um, but. Uh, I still don't feel like we got enough character development from Sam and Tara's mom, which makes me think that possibly uh, the mom, Sam and Tara's mom, could be one of the next ghost faces. Um, you never know, um, because we haven't seen her on screen yet. Because um, they did that with Billy's uh, mom in Scream 2. We didn't see her in the first movie, but she was mentioned. And, and then she got revealed in the second movie, and it was like, oh, what? I was kind of hoping they were going to do that with this movie, to be honest. Um, but uh, I was expect I wasn't really expecting the the greatest killer reveal anyway, especially when you get the vibe that it's not going to be Stu. You know, the motive isn't going to be, you know, what the first two movies were. Even Scream Four had a better killer motive because Jill wanting that popularity and that scene that Sydney everything that Sydney had. So Jill would never have to work a day in her life, and she could just be famous uh, uh, and be a victim her whole life. That that um, was interesting concept. That was very very interesting, and it was a, a fitting plot for 2011 Scream Four. Uh, and then Scream Five went into the whole requel element, which I thought was was at first I didn't quite like it, but it's kind of grown on me a little bit. And now this new Scream film, uh, despite it being the best. Since the first two movies, I do think it is the weakest killer reveals uh, out of all the movies, which is shocking in the sense that you have this killer shrine at the end of the movie, and they're all locked in, and trying. You know that was so good, and then you have all that those videos playing in the background, it reminded me of Scream, the Scream Show of season two. Uh, at the end, of, you remember when a stranger calls episode, they had all that stuff playing. Uh, it had, had a little bit of those vibes to it. Um, but it was like three ghost faces, and uh, you do get to see two ghost faces at the same time, which was finally we got to see that. Like, we did get to see that in Scream 4, but we didn't get to see it enough, and we got to see that a lot more in this movie. I mean, we got to see two ghost faces stab someone at the same time, like, both of them go at it. That was really, really cool. Um, and uh, the I don't know, the 3D and that 4DX just got me more immersed in the whole film. It, was, it just became a much more evolving movie uh, than it would have originally been for uh, for first viewing. Um, I just felt it. I felt the movie. I heard it. I, I it, it, you just and I, I didn't see. And it wasn't. An, I, and here's the thing. I saw Halloween ends in IMAX, in IMAX, and it 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 didn't mean anything. And I've seen tons of movies in IMAX, 2D, uh, that weren't IMAX dome. But we're, you know, the traditional IMAX, not the, you know, this huge, but this huge IMAX. And it did nothing for Halloween Ends. This movie was an IMAX, but I felt like I got more of an experience out of that 4DX uh, 3D than that IMAX. And uh, you just, you felt it around you, everything. Like, I, I, I got that with the Titanic re-release, but I, I didn't know 4DX has come this far. I saw the Evil Dead remake in 4DX, and I remember the chair moving a lot and stuff, but I don't remember this. Like, this 4DX, you felt everything around you. The blood, the the, the wind, um, uh, everything that's happening in the movie, you feel it around you, and you're just like, oh my god, you know, you just feel it. So, for a horror film like this, that they want it to be a roller coaster ride, you know? It's perfect. Perfect movie to have that 4DX experience, because... We haven't gotten that with the Scream film, and it was perfect for this because it was in, it was set in New York, and uh, the whole the whole subway sequence you could just feel that 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 wind that New York like oh my God it was just so cool. 
um and uh the movie was it was just it, it was it was just really great um i love the way it was shot um definitely has a has a modernized vibe from the way it was shot but it looked it was shot very well and it wasn't shot all retro and nostalgic which i liked i liked that it was trying to be something new um i liked that this movie wasn't trying i liked that the tone of this film wasn't too nostalgic or too meta it was it was trying to be more serious it was just a, it was a darker edgier scarier scream film than than all the previous movies i, I was literally heavy breathing that that, that um uh w when tara and sam were going into that, that supermarket and they're hiding and ghostface has the shotgun I was at the edge of my seat that whole scene. I, 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 I mean, that scene had me like, oh my god, what's gonna happen? That ladder scene, man. Um, I, I mean, so many sequences that were like, when when Sam's holding Tara and you think Tara's gonna like die. I, I mean, you have all these moments where I'm like, oh my god, what the, what's gonna happen here? Um, and it just it, it just didn't stop. But the movie did have moments of pause, which I liked, like. But really, the, the 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 scenes where the characters are on the subway, that's when you have time to breathe all of this in, and 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 it gives you a moment to kind of, you know, and you just see everybody in their Halloween costumes on this New York sub, and you're just like, okay, and your mind just kind of gives itself time to take everything in, and then the movie take takes a shift, you know. I do love Gail's sequence. Her death was really really sad, and when the credits rolled. I cried a lot. Um, uh, my sister went to use the restroom. Uh, and I told her, don't, no, there's a post credit scene. Uh, but when she went to use the restroom, I was just bawling my eyes out. Because uh, that was it. Like, Dewey, Gail, um, uh, Randy, like, all those classic characters, Stu, like, like they're all gone. And uh, it, it, it's, 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 it's very emotional um, because... You know, obviously anything can happen now with Sydney. Now that everyone is gone, especially Gail, I'm like, oh my god. Um, it was sad though because I love Courtney Cox. I've always Gail is always my fave out of the original three. Even though Sydney is always the most important, she's a standout. She's you know the reason why this all is happening. This exists, and I like that Sydney was mentioned in this movie as well. When Gail says Sydney. Uh, uh, you know, was going into hiding with her kids. It's exactly how it would have wrote Sydney off screen. They didn't kill her off off screen. They didn't do anything stupid like that. Like certain movie, like Sarah Connor and Terminator Three. Oh, she died of cancer. No, they didn't do anything like that with this movie. They just said, "Oh, Sydney is in." You know, she's she's protecting uh her kids. And I I think Gail said Kincaid. Did she, Mark? Because every time I hear Mark, I think of Mark Kincaid. So I'm like, is she, is she with Mark Kincaid? But uh, I don't know. Maybe it's a different Mark. Uh, it would be bizarre if she would be with a, a guy that was named Mark, but wasn't Mark from Scream 3. I don't know why they would do that and throw people off that much. But let's hope we get to meet Mark if they do bring Sydney back. <laughs> but I actually thought that's what the post credit scene was going to be. I thought the post credit scene was going to be Sydney showing up like like Sam and Tara or like in tears at the at the police station the next day or something like that. And Sydney comes in and she's like, you know, I'm here, guys, you know, or, you know, or something like I don't know. I, I thought there was going to be some moment that was just going to reveal that Sydney was going to get back into the plot or maybe it's like in Scream 3 when Sydney got the call from Ghostface and she was in hiding and then she, she realized, oh, I can't be in hiding anymore. He found me. Uh, I, I thought maybe we would, we were gonna get a moment like that, but I I wouldn't I, I wouldn't have been mad even like if it didn't happen like that. I was already expecting no Sydney anyway. I was going into this movie Sydney free, but I was open minded if they were gonna bring her back in some capacity, uh, like a setup for the next movie uh, or anything like that. Especially like Gail died, I was like that would make sense, but um, it it. it it gave me vibes of like the Scream Show a little bit of like these new characters um, really taking on the franchise, um, and 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 Kirby, she's a new 
off-screen character. She is not an OG. I, I don't know why people will say that about Kirby. She, she is Scream 4 2011, the reboot era. Like, like that. Scream 4 was the pilot to these new generation of Scream films. Scream 4 was the setup for anything to come after that, which was Scream 5, Scream 6, or, and now Scream 7, where, wherever this is going to go. But um, Kirby was the next Sydney in Scream 4. She was the next Sydney, the next Randy. She was a mix of both. And then Scream 5, you had the introduction to Tara and Sam, and they were kind of like the next Sydneys. So you had all, all those three in this movie, and you get the vibe, okay, they're really going to move on from the OG cast, and they're going to focus on these new characters, this new cast, and 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 bring really bring Kirby back, bring uh, her back, and flesh out Sam and Tara more and more, and make them new generation characters. It's kind of Nightmare on Elm Street vibes, you know, in that sense that because once you got to um, Nightmare Four and Five, then you had Alice. And then Nightmare 6, you had all these, all these new characters. And this kind of feels like that. Like, really, the Scream movies... And Wes Craven directed four of them. So, um, it definitely has that feel of, of going to this character and going to this character and, and setting up... But Scream, honestly, I think, does it best... Has done it best out of any horror franchise that it has existed. Out of Friday the 13th, Halloween, uh, everything... Uh, even Night Realm Street, I think Scream, honestly, after this film, is the best horror franchise ever. Um, and the Halloween, I mean, I always kind of have to put that at number one. I always do. I really have to put Halloween at number one. But Scream has never had a Halloween end. Scream 3 was bad. It was bad. Yeah. No denying. And I'll point out all the flaws of, of that film. But it was not Halloween ends. Um... We never got a Halloween ends in the Scream franchise. We never got a Freddy's Dead or a um, uh, um, Jason Goes to Hell. Uh, we never got any of those kinds of movies with the Scream movies. Um, and even when they took Ghostface to Manhattan, they gave us a story. They gave us good characters. They gave us great character development. They gave us a, a, a good plot and a good narrative. And, and, and payoffs, um, which you don't get with Jason Takes Manhattan. It's just Jason, which I thought that was so cool that the opening of that movie shows Jason Takes Manhattan. Um, uh, uh, the ghost face in the very beginning of the movie, um, ha uh, he's watching it. That was so cool. Um, and then I, when I saw the rolling credits, I saw the Marco Beltrami tracks that was reused from brian Ty uh, tyler thank you brian tyler for recycling so many tracks from the original movies the first three movies like he gets it he he brought back red right hand you hear that twice in the movie you hear um dewey's theme you hear i think you even hear sydney's theme you hear trouble in woodsboro you hear all those classic themes in this movie and uh incredible absolutely incredible um Brian Tyler, you threw, you threw out of the park. You did an even better job than he did with Scream 5. Great job. I, I felt like It felt like Marco Beltrami scored this movie. I, did, I, I, I forgot Brian Tyler was the composer of the movie. It felt like the original Scream music. So I really like that. I love that. Um, and I thought everybody, I, I, I thought the majority of the performances were, were great. Um, uh, of course, there was a couple parts I think were not my favorite of course the whole chad you know living at the end um i thought was just so over the top like scream five i, I let it go um but scream six either keep him alive and he just gets wounded right he just gets slightly wounded maybe some cuts in the arms and leg or something right or maybe gets one little stab in the stomach but the fact that he was stabbed multiple times by two ghost faces it's a little over the top um, and the killer motive, uh, I do like the whole, that it starts with the family, it goes back to the original movies, I do like that, I just don't think it was still a strong enough motive, uh, for why this is all happening, though, 
Uh, I really hope that in the future we get a killer motive for once out of all these Scream films where their motive makes sense, makes sense upon makes sense. Like, you're not just here to be meta or for this or for that or for that. Like, no, like, this legitly makes sense. Um, and I like that moment, actually, when Gail's on the phone with Ghostface and he says, oh, you you, you would have been a great Ghostface, you know, doing in Sydney, you know. They would never be, but but you 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 would have been, as if they would have done anything shocking with the old movies, you know. And and true, Gail would have worked as as a, as Ghostface. So maybe they'll do something uh, with Sam, you know, or Tara in the future movies. Who knows? Uh, anything could happen to these characters. Um, but uh, I do think it was a, a great screen film. I I really could talk about it forever upon ever. Uh, but this is my re reaction to the film, just walking out of the theater and, and, and just coming home from it. And uh, I loved it. It's not my favorite Scream film, but I, I put it up there with the first two, which is a big deal. Because I love Scream 4, and I really like Scream 5. Um, but uh, this, was, this, was, this was great. It wasn't perfect, you know, by any means. The first two are always the perfect Scream movies. Even the flaws that are in those first two movies more so the second one there's not really any flaws in the first film since the first film is the perfect horror movie um but uh yeah it it was just it was great it was it, and and i like that it it, it it had a lot of scream 2 homages uh homages which scream 2 is my favorite out of the series so i loved all that I love, oh, it's not set in Woodsboro, what Scream 2 wasn't set in Woodsboro. Always first viewing of movies for me. It's, uh, I can give a better review after watching it a second time, but I really want to just let out how I felt through f f first viewing, and uh, I'll, of course, do a review in the future. Uh, like, that it's just more of a, like a year later review, or a six months later review, or Blu-ray review. You know, when, that, when the Blu-ray comes out. Um, I hope that they come out with a box set. Paramount just releases a box set with Scream 6, and it's got Scream 3 and 4 in 4K. Because the first two are in 4K, but 3 and 4 aren't in 4K yet. And how perfect. They could just, instead of doing this, let's wait till, uh, you know, put 3 in the theater again, or 4 in the theater again. Just give us a box set. Even Scream Factory, imagine if they did some box set and it's all six movies and it's got all these bonus features that, that has never been on any of the discs because we've gotten the same bonus features through, through the last 25 years. So, uh, I don't know, that'd be, that'd be pretty cool. I would love to see that Scream Factory or, or, or just Paramount themselves with these 4K Blu-rays that they've been releasing. Just do your own box set. You don't even need Scream Factory. Paramount, do your own one to six box set and i'll pick it up a bunch of people will and you know uh, put like you know poster in there or this or that in there you know um but i think that'd be cool uh anyway i'd love this movie not everybody's gonna love it uh i, I can definitely see this being mixed response especially that sydney isn't in it there you do get that that vibe that feeling oh sydney's not in the movie there's something missing but oddly Sydney was in the last film, and it felt like something was missing. And yet this movie, Sydney's not in it, and it didn't feel like something was missing. So it was weird. And I just think this was a better directed and better written film than 5. I think the writers of Scream 5 and the directors of Scream 5 learned a lot, and they showed that with this movie. They, they, they showed that they can improve upon their flaws, um... But what they really, what the writers, not the directors, but the writers really need to do, either they need to get new writers entirely, um, or they need to, these writers to uh, come up with a killer motive that is killer. You know, and it's not just this, oh, it's a requel, or, oh, uh, you killed my son that was trying to make a horror movie of requels. Uh, no, like, Give us a killer motive that is like intense and 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 almost like you don't know why. It's it's almost that mis that mystique like Hannibal Lecter, right? You know, like like you don't know why. Um, I would love that for Scream and do something like Criminal Minds. I mean, the Scream Show. Honestly, whatever you got, people, whatever you got to say about the Scream Show, fine. But at least those first two seasons 
um, gave us killer motives. They were original, and they weren't about a reboot or about this or about that. Like, the Scream show literally had legit good killer motives, and the killer in Scream Season 2 wasn't killed. Which, what I was hoping, at, at the end of this movie, one of the ghost faces wasn't going to die, and that they were going to be put in prison. And that would set up a cult of ghost faces, something they were going to do with Stu, but they never did. But they could do this time around. They did sort of that with Scream show. Uh, um, n not necessarily, but they, they, they did a little bit of, of something new with that, with not killing the killer at the end and then and then uh, introducing a new ghost face or, you know, new killer, even though I know it's that's TV ghost face and all that. But, like, the show took risks and it did things that these that the movies haven't done still yet to this day. Um, and I feel like that if they really want to exit out of this nostalgia world, they have to um, really give us these these plots, these storylines that have never been done in Scream that are, aren't are movie meta-ish, that are more criminal minds, that are more American horror story, that are more on different levels of horror. And, 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 and that's the only way you're going to make your audience feel like you were evolving as a franchise and not repeating the same thing again and again. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm honestly fine with a record playing over again and again as long as it don't break. Um, but if it's a broken record, then maybe, you know, some spots in there need to be fixed up a bit. Um, but, uh, but you know, the Bond movies, they do the same thing every time, and that's not a bad thing. And maybe if Star Wars did that, it would be at a better spot. Um, Fast and Furious does the same thing every time. Transformers, tons, tons of franchises, they do the same thing again and again because they know people don't want anything else but that. And if they know if they mess with that, people aren't going to be as uh, aren't going to pay to see it or want to go see it as much. So um, I'm not necessarily against screen movies, you know, keeping this formula. I just hope that they can do a little bit more with it. Um, and this movie did. I think it's a good start, but I think that they still need to uh, f flush it out more with with where you could go with these ghost face characters and 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 the originality you can do with them and and really make them no longer just these these uh, copycat killers as as they're more just they're they're serial killers. They're real people, and you have a film where they're captured and they're questioned and interrogated and. And it's like, you know, criminal minds, and then they're put in prison, and they're, you know, and then they're on the, the news, and it's like, it's a different version of Scream that you've never seen before, where, you know, the killer, I wouldn't mind a Scream movie where the main killer, main character was Ghostface, and it was his or her, or, or them storyline throughout the whole film, and it wasn't the, the, the survivor's uh, point of view, it was the, it's Ghostface's point of view. And if they did something like Silence of the Lambs, I would love that for Scream. I think we, I, I think what should come next after Scream 7, if they don't do that with Scream 7, is give us something like Silence of the Lambs, but for Scream. Give us something really good, you know, really goodly written, greatly directed, something that really hasn't been done with the franchise. Not copy and paste Silence of the Lambs, but, you know, very uh, similar, you know, and... and, and yeah, just 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 make a, a great horror film. But anyway, I loved it in general. I hope you guys enjoyed my review, uh, and um, I will be making a video in the future about it. But thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you all very soon. All right, peace.